Mama Dr. Jones, if you happen to be watching, but probably not. Um, I have thought long and hard about making this video. Exactly how I was going to articulate my response was super important to me. And that's because I feel this topic needs to be addressed and is super important. So I messaged you about getting my hands on more research about women who test negative or have little to no HCG in their system when they're pregnant. When I originally read your response, I was so surprised that you had even responded and I was really taken back because I didn't expect you to respond at all. But once the excitement had died down and I reread your response, I thought, hmm, typical. But as I reread it again, something just didn't sit right. You ended your response with, HCG can't be absent in pregnancy, period. Like, that is all, nothing more to say. Those women who you've spoken to must be crazy or making it up because it just isn't possible. So I told you about my nursing friend who didn't test positive for HCG until she was 40 something weeks pregnant. Your response, again, false positive tests can occur, but physiologically HCG is required. I know this is what your books tell you. I guess my nursing friend who comes from the same medical way of thinking as you yourself must be crazy too. Seriously, this is what she experienced. She has no reason or benefit at all to fabricate such an experience, but somehow, according to medical literature and yourself, it isn't physiologically possible. Then she and her pregnancy must be a miracle. You're short uninterested and superior response was not really appreciated and you didn't even cut down my personal experience. I take offense to your response and I don't even have a relatable experience to be offended by. So let me explain to you why I asked you these questions and why your response was pretty much inferior. So we've been told, meaning the general population, as well as doctors and medical professionals have been taught that once the embryo adheres and implants into the wall of the uterine lining, it begins to secrete sufficient enough amounts of HCG to be detected by most tests. And it is also said that HCG typically doubles every 48 to 72 hours. But why is this variance accepted? Well, simply put, because every woman, every baby, and every pregnancy is different. This is a fact. It is also a fact that some women have small detectable amounts of HCG in their systems when they are not pregnant. So this got me wondering. This tells me that HCG, the presence of HCG in a woman's system does not indefinitely indicate pregnancy. In fact, even men have small traceable amounts of HCG in their systems. So why does the medical field consider HCG the pregnancy hormone? Putting so much emphasis on this hormone is misleading, and this is very unfortunate, especially because some women, some pregnant women, fall through the cracks in the medical system because they test negative for HCG in urine and blood, but are definitely pregnant. So I ask exactly how much HCG is required for the corpus luteum in pregnancy? The answer is different for every woman, every embryo, every pregnancy. So science and modern medicine would like for you to believe they have it all figured out, down to a number. Fact is, hormones are not an exact science. Some women aren't pregnant, and they have a blood HCG value of 10. So why would it be so hard to believe a woman who is pregnant can test at that, at a value of 10 or lower, and the pregnancy still be progressing healthily? And normally. Why is it so hard to believe the variation of no HCG during a healthy pregnancy can happen to some women during some pregnancies? It is accepted that st standard HCG levels in pregnant women can vary quite massively from pregnant woman to pregnant woman. This is because HCG levels depend on what is normal for that particular woman, how her body responds to pregnancy in general, 
as well as how many embryos she is carrying for that pregnancy. It is important to remember the way every woman reacts to pregnancy is entirely unique. We are told the hormone HCG tells the body to continue to produce progesterone, which in turn prevents menstruation. Exactly how much of the hormone HCG is really needed for every individual woman to continue to produce progesterone is entirely unique, as well as how quickly the HCG needs to increase to stimulate production of progesterone to prevent menstruation is unique to that pregnancy. Every prof medical professional knows this. So do the numbers need to steadily increase to continue to stimulate production of progesterone? Every time in every pregnancy? If every pregnancy is truly unique, can you really answer definitively? A woman who was four weeks pregnant can get a blood beta HCG result of five. A woman who is not pregnant can receive the same exact result. This tells me that HCG is not the pregnancy hormone. It is just a hormone that commonly increases when an embryo implants into the uterine lining of a woman. Many of your hormones increase during pregnancy. And I'm not even covering HCG variants. So let's think about this. Some pregnant women have relatively normal or even high HCG levels, but lower than normal progesterone. So how much does one hormone affect another at any given time. Hormones are indefinite. Hormones are temporary. Hormones are unfixed and ever-changing. To indefinitely say that HCG can't be absent in pregnancy because it is physiologically required is a mix on words. Physiologically, humans sometimes have small amounts of this hormone in our blood despite pregnancy. To focus so entirely on something that has such incredible variability from pregnancy to pregnancy, something that changes so often and can even be found in a male who doesn't have the ability to gestate a baby, stating that this hormone that is not just found in pregnancy can't be absent during pregnancy is defective. It also completely demoralizes the many, 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 many women who have contacted me with their personal story of experiencing a pregnancy with little to no HCG. It tells me and it tells them that they were and are crazy to know or think that they were or that they tested negative in the beginning, middle, and even end of their healthy pregnancy. It tells them that they must not remember correctly. It tells them they must have some kind of hysteria. Just the typical modern medicine response According to medical lit literature, you just verbatim told me what it says in a book. Well, I could read a book myself. Not a very well thought out response at all. And that is unfortunate for you because so many look up to you for education, information, and general guidance. Myself was included. Fact is, some women do test negative in blood beta HCG tests at four weeks pregnant, five weeks pregnant, six weeks pregnant, seven weeks pregnant, eight weeks pregnant. Some women test negative on a blood beta HCG test at nine weeks pregnant, 10 weeks pregnant, 11 weeks pregnant, 12 weeks pregnant, 13 weeks pregnant, 14 weeks pregnant, 18 weeks pregnant, 24 weeks pregnant, 32 weeks pregnant. You get it. Some women test positive for three pregnancies in a row and at five weeks pregnant, they get all three pregnancies, they test positive at five weeks pregnant. And then for whatever reason, don't get a positive with the fourth pregnancy until they're 12 weeks pregnant. How frustrating could that be? Extremely confusing, but even more so when a doctor tells you it didn't happen and it is physiologically impossible. Every woman is different. Every baby is different. Every pregnancy is different. Every medical professional will agree with this. For every pregnancy, HCG levels are different. These are facts. And sometimes you get pregnant and you don't test positive for HCG in the beginning, in the middle, and even for the entire pregnancy. And that very unique but possible variation is okay too. If you or someone you know has experienced a healthy pregnancy with little to no HCG, please comment below 
email me or contact contact me through my social media links in the description box below i would love to hear your story and share it thank you so much for watching you are wonderful i hope you're happy i hope you're healthy have a great day see you next time bye